Hello, hello. Hi. Okay. Hey. So I saw that you do the YouTubes and stuff. Do you want to shout yourself out to my small audience right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's Ask Yourself on YouTube. You can find me there. Uh, yeah, how how are you doing, Pixie? I don't really uh, I don't really know you. I don't really know your stuff. I just kind of wanted to talk mm -hmm. after seeing your uh, your discussion on Destiny Stream. Yeah, so I'm a mess, um, but it's okay. <laughs> I I love talking philosophy, politics. I did like a very near bus travel call, like on Monday two days ago. Wow, that feels like a week ago. Um, so yeah, right now I'm majoring in econ and philosophy, so I still have a lot of things to learn. Like I try to be humble and stuff, um, mm -hmm. but I know some things here and there that I can debate or have a conversation about. Hmm, okay. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I heard your discussion, and uh, I think you won, actually. I think that you did generally well, but I definitely took issue with some of the things you were saying. So I was kind of thinking to myself, like, what would be the best way to do a conversation like this? And I considered just, like, raising the issues one by one, but that feels like it might get, I don't know, kind of kind of boring and taxing. So what might be easier is if you just kind of explain what you... You know, if you kind of make your case for moral realism, explain you know how you mean it when you say morality is real, and uh, I can kind of I can kind of give some pushback against it if you end up saying some of the same kind of things that you said before, which I assume you will. Okay, so here's here's the deal, right? Um, and it's complicated because I'm not the best at wording things, so I've been like just Socratic methoding my stuff through this. <laughs> I've just been asking <laughs> okay. people questions instead, so no, I'm the one being questioned, which is good because that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, um, morality is, I, in my opinion, a moral construct, right? It's what humans ought to do, but it doesn't make it any less real, any less real. Um, I believe that, like, if we're going to, like, the definition I use for morality is, um, you know, what humans ought to do to create, uh, or I guess to optimize, um, social coherence. Now, I know some of those words sound vague, and we'd have to get into, like, detail of, like, what social coherence, like, what exactly, what exact framework should we use? But I believe, like, in the gist of that statement, there is, like, an optimal set of rules that we can use um, to, like, have the most amount of social coherence possible, which is basically, like, people getting along with each other, less, like, things like crime, less hate between people, things like that, usually, like, would result, like, in happiness um, for most people. So okay. here's the deal. Like people are people then say, well, what if somebody values something different than you? What if they value pain and destruction and hate? Mm -hmm. And then to that my response, then I think, well, that's like if a person um, you know, let's say we have like a numerical system, one, two, three, four, and they say, Well, I'm gonna value the number one as two, or instead of using the I don't know, the H for hydrogen, I'm going to say that's a different symbol and I'm going to, you know, switch all these things around, which in that case, it's like, okay, you can choose to value those stuff, um, but we're not really going to take it into account um, in the sense that it's going to either lead in, like, destruction or stop us from reading, like, a greater truth or progression or things like that. So I know it's a lot of big writing. We can like get into like the details about it. I'm just giving you like a very general overview of what I believe in. Yeah, no, I appreciate starting with an overview. So I guess the kind of core of what interests me when I'm talking to realists is a question, something probably like this. Do you think that someone is in error if they have values like, I don't know, let's say like raping a baby? Um, yes. Okay. Now, I'm not convinced of that. So what kind of argument, and it doesn't have to be formal, if, if you, I don't, I, you said you're a Phil student, if you know how to structure a formal argument, that'll make everything way easier. But um, it can be informal too. I just want to understand, how is that person in error? And I guess you're streaming on Twitch, probably shouldn't use crazy language or get booted. Let's just talk about someone who wants to like, like kill a kid or something. That's probably fine, okay. right? Okay. Um... Let me bring up, I'm going to actually, give me one second, I'm bringing up a notepad so I can, because I, I, sometimes I use OneNote to create, OneNote to create, like, um, flowcharts of logic and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I do the same thing all the time. When I debate um, someone, 
which I'm thinking of this more as a conversation. I didn't exactly. Yes, this is I mean, definitely a more if, conversation. If you want to fucking duke it out, we can, but it's not there yet. Um, no, when I, no. When I do, when I do get into that, though, uh, I also usually keep notes. It's like, you know, I can keep some amount in my head, but once we're, like, a few layers down into their inference, it's like, okay, we need to track this somehow or we're just going to get lost. Um, so, yeah, take your time, get your stuff out. Let me know when so, you're uh, good. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the idea of, like, where morality kind of came from or where I believe morality has they come from, right? Okay, and so, sorry, to, sorry to cut you off, but just to be clear, the thing that you're trying to explain to me right now is you're trying to give some kind of argument for why the person who values killing the kid is wrong, right? They're in error. That's what you're trying yeah. to give? Okay, cool. So, yeah, so I to do that, like, I have to... I Well, I want to start from, like, the, I guess, like, very, very beginning. Um, sure. So this, this is going to sound like the strangest argument ever, but bear with me for a second. <laughs> okay. So a human, right? Mm -hmm. And it may, we, we may end up going to the ultimate skeptic position, which, you know, in that case, like, why value anything at all? But I'm going to start, like, assuming that these things make sense from the beginning. So a human baby, if you put it out in the woods, will die alone, right? Like, there is no way that you could have, like, a human, like, infant child just born out in the fucking woods in the middle of nowhere and really expect it to survive. I mean, it's it's logically possible for it to survive, but yeah, it seems like the odds are pretty low. I, I would say, like, it's it's nearly, like, illogical to believe that. I mean, unless we have some Tarzan Ooh. fucking situation, because, okay. like... Um, sorry, I, I just have to push back. So for me, I'm pretty strict when I talk about things like logical possibility. Um, mm -hmm. So... You don't actually think that you can derive a contradiction from the propositions, or from the proposition that this baby is, you know, propositions plural, that this baby was left in the wild and this baby survived, right? Because, like, no, we can, yeah, we can yeah, agree yeah, it's no. super unlikely, but you can't actually, like, literally derive a logical contradiction there. It's not yeah, logical. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. If you. Well, yeah, if you say this baby was left in the woods and it survived, then, like, there's, you can't, like, find a contradiction in there because you're already making the statement it survived. But I'm saying, theoretically speaking, if you have a baby in the woods, it is most, 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 most likely not going to survive. Yes, we agree about that. Okay, good. Um, so, this is very strange. I know it sounds very strange, so bear with me. I don't even think <laughs> I'm crazy. It's fine. No, it's all good. Um, okay. Babies in the middle of the woods. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, you're typing that. That's funny. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the reason why I start with this is because humans are social creatures. We're, we're creatures that we basically cannot survive with one another. Uh, maybe if you're, like, a, already, like, grown and you already had that, like, you know, taken care of and stuff like that as a child and your needs met, then you can go off and, like, live your life in the middle of the woods for all you want. Mm -hmm. Um but as like at least at the very infancy, you would need some sort of taking care of to find basic food, to find um to be protected from predators, to be protected yeah. from just the natural environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so so with that like in mind, I would claim that yeah, humans are social creatures. Um, we basically need one of one another to survive. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, again, when we use words like need, it's like, we're not we're not talking about it being logically impossible, but it's a very stable general statement. Like, obviously, we're very social. Obviously, you know, if you ask someone who, like, I don't know, who's in a relevant field, like bio human biology or some shit, I don't know, they're going to tell you, like, yeah, a human infant requires care for the first, like, however many years. So, yeah, we agree that humans are a social species. Humans need each other to survive, generally speaking. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, good. Um... Because I'm just, like, trying to set my, I, I don't know if I'm grounding my axioms, if that's the right phrasing I would use. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to, like... Well, get, when you say that... I know, I know. Well, j just to be <laughs> clear, you, that kind of assumes a certain theory of epistemic justification, right? Like, do you know about, like, foundationalism, infinitism, coherentism? 
I've read lightly about it. I do not know enough to claim yeah, that. Like, not, I no, I, I, I would also knowledge. not claim to have deep knowledge. But when you st when you talk about there being some like fundamental or like axiomatic level of knowledge, it sounds like you're assuming a foundationalism. I don't know if that'll become relevant, but you know, it's just worth noting. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm like trying to set like a foundation for my argument of like why where I believe morality comes from. Sure. Um, yeah. So humans are social creatures. Um, so obviously being the social creatures that we are, or I, ob I shouldn't say obviously, but to me it appears that since we are social creatures, since we are creatures that, um, interact with each other, that live within like similar spaces, that, you know, need the, like similar resources, um, we, to me at least from what I've read and what it appears to be, it seems like morality has become a result of those interactions. So just like how humans have created the wheel, just like how humans have um, created, I like I'm trying to like think about other like very like basic like stone um stone age items. Um, to mm -hmm. me, what it appears to be is that morality was like derived from this, and the way I'm defining like morality is the set of rules that, what is it? The set of rules, um, or no, sorry, what humans ought to do. Mm -hmm. um, well, wh once you involve the ought language, then we're getting into weird territory. Like, I agree that humans have the kind of values that they do because of like some combination of their biology and their environment. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I know it gets complicated when we add the odd language, but mm -hmm. since, like, morality is often, like, defined this way, I feel like it would be wrong for me, I guess, not to use that, because then, like, we would be technically about talking about something that isn't necessarily morality, but it's so hard at the same time, because, like, you know, morality is, like, a fucking, like, million-year-old question, it's, like, the question of being, like, <laughs> having a clear definition is fucking hell to find, you know? Um, yeah, like, well... Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I agree with, like, the descriptive claim that, like, the reason we have the kind of morality we have, which we can we can talk about what morality means, but, like, I would just say the kind of values we have. Like, if you ask most people about their values, they're not going to list things like, you know, killing a kid, and they are going to list things like, I don't know, like, social cohesion or, like, being friendly to each other or, like, <laughs> I don't know, things like that. I think the reason that we have, you know, this kind of broad, like, shared set of values is probably some combination of culture and, uh, biology. So I, I can agree with that, with that descriptive claim. Yeah. Um, so here's the deal. Um, and this is where it gets, like, really complicated. I don't even know if I want to use this argument because I don't even 100% feel this <laughs> argument, but I feel <laughs> like it's going to resonate with you, so I want to use right. it. You already know what'll resonate with me? We've talked for, <laughs> for like, <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> Well, I, I tell me if I'm wrong. Getting presumptuous. Um, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. No. Let's hear. <laughs> getting cocky. I get a little bit cocky sometimes when it comes to this stuff. Which <laughs> is something that I'm about. Okay, um, okay. So, do you value objectivity? Mm, what do you mean by objectivity? Okay. So yeah, that's, and this is <laughs> this is gonna go in a circle. Like, I. <laughs> I, to me, like, what I would usually define as objectivity is that, that which is mind independent, but I don't believe that is possible. I don't believe there's anything truly mind independent. So that's when I usually Wait, ask whoa, somebody. You're, you're like some kind of hardcore idealist? Like, do you, sorry, just to be clear, you think mm -hmm. that something like whether the sun exists, that that's actually, like, it depends on minds? Well... More or less, like I, I don't think you can prove How it do you outside. Possibly... You, I don't. Wait, mm -hmm. sorry. Can I can I say one thing? There's a difference Go between saying something like you know I can't prove that you know I can't prove that there is a reality outside of my consciousness versus making the positive claim that there isn't, right? Yes. So yes. are you at, if you're doing the latter, then you're some kind of like no, no, I'm not doing the latter. Okay, I'm so you're not you're not I've... saying. Mm -hmm. So can I just ask you? You're not saying that. It's, it's the case that, like, the sun requires our subjectivity to exist. You're just saying with something like, I can only, like, know about the sun through my subjective experience or something like that, right? Yes, that is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. So, 
yeah so that's that's the way i feel like like when it comes to objectivity when people are claiming things are like find independence i i like my, my response to that is well there's no way to really claim that it can there's no way to really prove that something can be mind independent because it must go through our perception first everything must go through our perception first so that's when a person usually changes their definition of, of objectivity um where they claim well things that are objective are things that you know you can measure or things that are objective are whatever definition so that's where i'm going to like kind of pass it back to you like how would you define objectivity unless if you think that you can actually like 100 percent prove that something's like mind independent um, okay, well, there's two questions. There is like, do I value it? And how would I define it? So like, yeah. I guess we'll start with defining it. Like, when I say that something is objective, I think that I just mean that it would be that way irrespective of minds, something just like that, probably. Um, and do I value objectivity? I, d I don't know that it's something that I value. It's not clear to me that I value it. Um, so I guess, I guess I'd say I'm not sure. Okay. Like, because so I, I, I there's things that are mind dependent, like, well, again, you can uh, get under all of this by questioning, like, do we know, is there really anything outside of our mind? But there's things that we generally take to be mind dependent, like certain, like, emotions or something. And then there's things that are not mind dependent. And, you know, I might value things in both categories. It's not clear to me that I value something just because it's mind independent. Like, there's rocks out there. And, you know, presumably, those exist objectively. But, like, I don't just you know, value the rock because it exists objectively or something. Okay, so this is where we run into, like, I guess, our first disagreement. Um, maybe not, like, about the values, but you believe that there are things, like, irrespective of your, of your mind. Um, which, you know, I, you know, I want to claim that. I want to be, like, well, yeah. I, I, don't, I wouldn't... This... Well, sorry, you, you, you continue. Yeah, I would want to claim that. Like, I definitely want to claim that the moon is real and this water bottle is real. However, there's no way I can prove that. So either I act upon it because I believe, like, hey, there's some value acting in such a way, or, like, I acknowledge, like, hey, you know, like, this water bottle in my hand, like, my, it's like, I, I can't, there's no way I can prove it's real. So I should act, like, with skepticism, which I don't take that position because, like, holy shit, acting like if everything is skeptical all the time is draining and I don't think very useful. Um, well, you probably I guess can't. The question... I mean, unless sorry to cut you off, but like unless unless mm -hmm. you're you you believe like doxastic voluntarism, like unless you think you can like choose your beliefs or something, you probably can't control that you think other minds exist and like external reality exists and stuff. I don't know that we can give like justifications for those things, and even invoking like the concept of justification is like a friggin' huge squirrel's nest. But um, yeah, so I, I think we're just. We seem to just have certain beliefs, and yeah, that just seems to be the way it is. Um, I'll, I'll let you continue, but I just want to remind you, like, what I'm hoping is that you'll come around to why someone is in error if they, you know, value, like, killing a kid or something like this. Because that's, yeah, that's I... really, like, because questions of, like, you, you kind of, like, realism and objectivism, those are, those are like, interesting to me, but the, I think the thing that's, like, kind of the core interest here is, like, People who call themselves realists and objectivists seem to think, you, you know, generally speaking, they seem to think that you are wrong to hold certain values. That seems to be a common thing you'll hear from people who hold those views. And that's the thing that I'm very skeptical of. I don't understand how someone is wrong if they, you know, value killing a baby or something like that. Okay, so the reason, I guess, like, I don't want to, like, completely step forward, but the reason why I'm trying to, like, put out this framework where I'm going over like all these like small details of like do you value objectivity do you not like well, what is objectivity to you is it really mind independent and can you prove it is because I'm like trying to get to the conclusion that objectivity um <laughs> that technically like something objective doesn't exist necessarily or there's no way we can really efficiently prove it I'll yeah you, you have to be really careful about those two claims right there because you kind of say them both but they're really different okay so i know yeah uh, which if you say something objective doesn't exist you're committing yourself to like some really hardcore solipsism shit right there right but yeah if, if you, I, I know but the other is just an epistemic claim the other is just like I'm, I'm not saying it does or doesn't i just don't think that we can you know like prove things outside of our subjective experience 
But yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, continue. Just wanted to draw attention to that separation. Yeah, no, and I, I appreciate it because sometimes like when I'm debating or talking like this, um, I am not careful enough with my language and that creates confusion. So I, I do appreciate that um, yeah. for you to bring that up. I, I do appreciate it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so the reason why like I'm bringing up all those questions is if we cannot prove that there is, um, but if we cannot prove that there is like an objective reality, um, then why treat it as if there is an objective reality? Um, I guess I just don't see the relevance. Could you, could you tell me like how, like, sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I just don't understand how that relates to why someone would be in error if they value, uh, murdering the kid. Okay. Um, because in real life, usually, um, when we're making like a mathematical equation or we are making a claim on science, when we're making all sorts of claims, we act as if people can be in error of those claims, of those statements that it's not coherent with reality or it's not um, in line with our beliefs or no, not our beliefs really, but like with whatever standard we have set, put, put, uh, set forth or have put down. And I am going to be making the claim that, hey, like this can apply to subjective, like to moral, to moral frameworks as well. And even if people want to claim that these are subjective under the frameworks we use we can claim that hey no like this is actually wrong um just like how we can say oh if you're going to claim one plus one equals four that is indeed wrong now you can make an argument about those frameworks themselves you can say like well you know why can't somebody value one plus one equals four why can't they they create their own value system of that and then technically like in their own value system that would be true but the point of the matter is, like, the vast majority of people do not work under that system, and it provides, like, no use or utility to do it that way. Um, okay, so maybe this would help. What error do you think someone's making if they have that value? If they have that what? If they have that value. If they value killing a kid. What, what is the error that they're making? Well, generally speaking, um, I believe that killing a kid, if you value killing kids, you are not contributing to maximize, well, you're not really maximizing like social coherence. You're creating a, what is it? You're probably going to create a very unstable society. You're gonna have people who are not going to want to work with each other or be with each other because they're not sure if, hey, you're in, like a kid killer, you're gonna go kill my kid. Um, Things like that. It's, it's going um, to create a very stressed out, um, not very as like I guess like, good. I know good is like a whole other, <laughs> a whole other conversation we can get into, um, but it's not going to create a very like social coherent society. Um, okay, but I don't see how that means the person is making an error, right? So like if I go and I do like a kickflip on a skateboard, I'm not like uh, I'm not you know buying a vegan hot dog. So it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying a vegan hot dog, but it's not that there's any error I'm making, right? It's not like I have a false belief. It's not like I'm contradicting myself. Well, that's why I brought up the whole idea of a person valuing one plus one equals four. Like, yes, they could create like a number system with which that, that, which that is what they value. And technically they are not wrong for thinking that they are not wrong for thinking one plus one equals four in their system, um, because they value, you know, this different set of, um, symbols for what they believe in um however we as a society we as a whole would say hey no you're wrong because like the vast majority of people are not viewing that social system or that social framework or you know that system is kind of like in contradiction with what is most helpful towards the world so just to be clear would you grant that the person who values killing the kid does not necessarily have any contradictory or false beliefs? Yes. Okay, well that's that's the core of my point. And if you if you grant that, then I mean it just kind of seems to me like like that's that's where you lose like the interesting part of or at least what I think a lot of people would take to be the interesting part of like realism or objectivism or something like that. If people can have like whatever values they want and they're not in error 
then you know if you're some kind of if you're some kind of realist you, you're you know you maintain that you're a realist despite that or whatever it's like that's that's fine but like you've kind of given me the main thing that i wanted to point out there um so here's the like, deal right like because just a basically person... you would you would grant if i want to you know like rape a baby like i'm not wrong I'm not do there's nothing wrong on my part well you're not wrong to yourself, you know? Like, if you believe that is right and that is, like, the weird framework you're working with, like, by yourself, then, sure, in your own, like, little reality, just, like, how somebody can say one plus one equals four, like, that well, can be true to you. Well, that, but... that that's a bad analogy, though, because that's, like, a contradiction, right? Like, you'd be able to draw out a contradiction there with that math example. Um, okay, to approve, well, that's, that's the thing, like, could you, like, if somebody says, like, oh, you know, when I yeah, see it's, it's these analytic. objects, I'm calling this one instead of two, and yeah. I'm going to say that these two, like, these objects here, this is a one now. Then they wouldn't be one talking about the same thing. Th then they wouldn't be like, talking about the same these. thing. If they're, if they're actually using the same definitions of one and one and plus and you know, if, if they're actually defining those terms in the same way, it's just going to be, like, analytic, just in virtue of the meaning of the words that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're, I think we might be getting somewhere with this. Um, so I, that's, I guess, like, the main point that I'm trying to get here as well. That we have to, yes, like, we have to be working with under the same definitions to be able to, like, pull out clear examples of what wrong or right is. If you well, do not have... Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, yeah, no, you go ahead. Yeah, if you you can have di you can have different definitions, and ultimately your question to like or the question in general of like okay, but why do you define it that way? Like why are you choosing to define it that way? Like why is this defined this way? It, it's always gonna basically go back to oh because that's what I value like for anything at all. Why are you choosing the symbol one to value an object like that? It ultimately is gonna go back to oh because I value it that way. Um, but yeah, what I'm but... trying to like, explain sorry, here sorry, is that, going. yeah, what I'm trying to explain here is that um, under the systems that we can work or create, um, we can say like, oh no, under this system, like that value doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously you can say like, if your goal is to like maximize happiness for everyone, you know, murdering a kid doesn't achieve that, right? But that's just not showing that the person is wrong. That like, that's well, kind of the big claim for me. Framework. Yeah, but that's just trivial. You're just saying they're wrong with respect Is to your value. Is trivial, though? Because, yes, like, but... that's how we yeah, well, work. In... It's, it applies just as much to your position, right? You're wrong with respect to his values by not killing the baby. Well, there's there's two things here. Um, the reason why I wouldn't make the claim that it's trivial is because, and with that in mind, I would say that almost, like, any science, any math, any, like, Anything, any any sort of study we do in the world, I feel it could, could go back to this idea that it's trivial because if a person just decides to value something else, um, then, you know, they just value something else and you can't really go any more deeper than that. Um, I guess, so, yeah. I guess, I guess I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss there because it's like, if you grant that the person isn't in error, if they have like basically whatever values they want, like, that is kind of just the core point of what I'm saying, right? Like, you, you're not actually showing that they're wrong. All you're saying is you're not doing what I value. It's like, okay, cool, but they're not wrong. Okay. I, I'm trying to, like, bring this... Like, I'm trying to connect this, like, to objectivity and to realism. Or not realism. I'm trying to, con uh, uh, to connect this to moral realism and trying to connect this to the concept of objectivity and what we use in society that helps us out. Um, I know that sounds like a very general statement. You might be like, what does that have to do with this? But let me explain. Well, I might so be able to give you an easy pathway. Like, maybe you could just explain to me why we should value, you know, maximizing... What is it you want to do? Like, maximize cohesion? Is that what you said? Why should Social someone... Cohesion. Hey, Google, stop. Why should someone... <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't talk to you like that. Pixie, stop. Um, just, t like, yeah. T like, because the thing is... It just sounds, it sounds like all you're doing is you're just saying people are wrong with respect to what you value, which like, I mean, that's, that's all I would be doing if I say that someone's wrong morally also, right? It's like, if I say that what someone's doing is immoral, all I'm meaning is that they're going against what I desire. Um, but 
I, I guess I, mean, I, I guess it's just if you grant that they don't have any false beliefs and they're not contradicting themselves, that like that is my point. That's really all there is to it. That's where you lose the ability to ever like really say that someone is like wrong morally. All you can do is just say like, you know, you're out of accordance with this norm and I think people will like this norm more. And that I mean, that's fine. You can make you can be persuasive like that, but yeah, the core the so... core point I think has been kind of made. So this is, this is like, I guess like what I'm trying to like get back to this whole idea that I would actually like agree with that to a certain extent. Um, but then to me, it would be inconsistent to not apply that with any sort of science, math, or any sort of study that I value. Um, because at the end of the day, when it comes to even like the creation of language symbols, mathematics, um, you know, the idea of how, or the basis that we work upon, like for like, a, let's say something like as simple as like how atoms work or how um, how we would claim that, I don't know, molecules work. I'm using like very vague language. I'm just trying to like list examples. At the end of the day, the reason why we make those claims or those basis are on this idea of like what we value. So mm -hmm. if I want to be consistent, if I want to be like, hey, you know what? I treat these things as real. I treat as if we can find a deeper answer within these things. I do not see why I should not make a why I should make a special exception for the topic of morality or for the study of morality. I guess I don't see the inconsistency. Like I take inconsistency to mean that there's a contradiction. In what way am I contradicting myself? Uh, you're treating at well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm like not understanding what you're saying. But to me, it appears like you're saying like oh, well, these things are things that have, like, a... Or tell me if I'm wrong, the way. To me, it seems like, okay, um, there's no, like, real moral realism, or moral realism is ultimately subjective. Can I, can I say something to that, actually? It, it really it, depends what you mean, right? Because there's a sense in which I'm a realist. Like, I think that there are moral facts, and you'll see that's just a definition of realism in a lot of places. But once I tell someone what I think a moral fact is, which is just a fact about your psychological state, a lot of people who are realists are just going to say, no, 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 you don't get to call yourself a fucking realist if that's what you're saying. So, I mean, whether you want to attack me as a non-realist or not, it kind of depends how you think about realism. I do think they're moral facts. I just think that all they are are facts about our psychological states. Okay, I actually like, kind of agree with you on that, but more, <laughs> okay. more or less, right? Because I think like it is the result, what is it, the idea of what humans ought to do um, to maximize social coherence. This is why I, like, I'm really explaining myself really terribly here. So I'm going to say like a jumble of words and you tell me what you understand from that. So <laughs> okay. ultimately, I would say why someone is an heir for killing a kid is because mm -hmm. even if they themselves do decide to value killing kids, Mm -hmm. their value does not actually help with social coherence at all like morality doesn't just exist within one person it exists and it exists with like what that person does in respect to how it affects others okay so we just have to be careful because by in error you don't actually mean that they have any false beliefs or that they're contradicting themselves all you mean is that they're not doing what you like well what i'm saying is an error i'm saying that they're not contributing to social cohesion and they're like acting against what the majority of humans want in, or like or in, need or but let me be clear let me be clear sure. um you're probably thinking well then at the end of the day it's just you know technically a lot of humans don't like that therefore um that's what makes it wrong they just simply do not like it but i think that there is value and answers that are and now we're using the word value much um but i think that there is like a deeper truth or a deeper answer or a meaning or knowledge that we can derive from that just like how technically somebody could decide to have a different a random like arbitrary value or random arbitrary way of thinking about how atoms work uh, but since we don't know the, the, the truth of that we can't necessarily like rebuff them i guess i'm not sure what you're disagreeing with me about what like what is it that you think i'm saying that's wrong um, well, I'm not really sure because you kind of like didn't make like a, well, your first claim was that I do not think that you can say why someone is wrong in error for killing a child. Yeah, um, I said, I don't, I don't see how they'd be in error. And uh, yeah, and then I mean, my answer to you was, well, they'd be in error depending on like the framework that you're using on. 
you're using um, yeah. for morality, what but, your humans ought to do. So a person can think like, oh, a human ought to kill one another. Um, they're not really maximizing social coherence, but that's what they're valuing. Just like a human can ought to value um, or should or could decide to value, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think about like what I was, the examples I gave before. Um, could decide to value a arbitrary number system that we don't currently use. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm just I'm lost with respect to what you think I'm saying that's wrong because it sounds like we agree that but um, you... what the fuck? Hey Google, shut up! I think that we sorry. I think that we agree. Who's listening in? That, yeah, I know. Like what? What the fuck? Um, so, I mean, it sounds like we agree that that person does not have, they don't have to have any false beliefs and they don't have to be contradicting themselves. Like that is kind of the core of what I'm saying. So, and unless there's something like else that you, cause, cause when I watched the conversation, I got, I think there's more than one conversation actually. I got the there impression that you would disagree with a claim like that. And you kind of did at the start, you said you do think they're wrong. But when we clarify, you don't actually think that they have any false beliefs. You don't think they're contradicting themselves. You just think they're not doing what you like. And I, I agree they're not doing what you like, but I, I guess I'm just asking what like well, what is it you think that I'm saying that's wrong at this point? But I guess like the problem that I'm finding or like my biggest contention with this, mm -hmm. and maybe this is just like really fucking petty, um, <laughs> okay. but it feels like very like reductionist to say, hey, you're just doing, they're just doing something you don't like. Um, mm, because well, if you want to... If you want to say there's more to morality than it just being about our desires, then that's like your kind of burden there, right? Because as far as I can tell, it is. So to me, all it sounds like you're saying is that they're doing something you don't like. If you want to say there's something deeper to morality, then I'm open to hear it. But I'm very much well, like not convinced of that kind of thing. Well, yeah, technically we can talk about like all social coherence just being what humans like or don't like. Um, but I guess the reason why I take problem with that phrasing is that... Um, Oof, we might get into disagreement here. So I guess it would like technically get more into like a subjective territory. Like it would be like reducing reducing it to like completely, completely, completely subjective. Like, oh, it's just what you personally don't like. While I would argue like, well, no, it's not just what I personally don't like. It's what would benefit society the most. Mm, stop um, for a sec. Benefit, mm -hmm. benefit is a normative term, right? I take benefit mm -hmm. to just like I kind of take it to be question begging basically because when you say benefit you're just talking about what would be good for society and all it means in my view to say something good for society is pixie likes it right so when you say uh, you know when, when you start saying it wouldn't it would be what benefits society it just sounds like all you're doing again is just saying it's against your values okay so, so this it's is still why it, I it's, up... I, sorry I should be clear so so the criticism there is I don't see how bringing in the language of benefiting society gets you around the problem of all you're really talking about when you say they're committing an error is that they're doing what you don't like right benefit just means what's good right and what's good is just what you like okay so this is where let me let me take off my notes for a second <laughs> okay good is just what you like um well, if we want to be specific, like, I just take good to refer to your desires, right? Like, so whenever, for any of this language, okay, when we say, you know, X is good, bad, right, wrong, we should or shouldn't do it, I take all of that to just mean that you have a desire for or against X to some degree. So if you say you shouldn't, you know, kill a baby, I take that to mean that you have a desire that I not kill a baby. If you say you should give to charity, I take that to mean that you think that or you have a desire I give to charity. If you say it's a moral obligation that you not, I don't know, like commit a genocide or something, I just take that to mean you have a really fucking strong desire that I don't do that. That's all I take that language to mean. So you believe good, bad, those are just an expression of our, expression of our values. I don't know what else it would be. So yeah, I mean, it seems to me like the language of desire makes sense of moral conversation. And I don't know what else could make sense of it. Okay, I'm just going to be spitballing here. Not even spitballing. I'm just sure. going to be throwing back and forth questions. Um, okay. Because I um I'm kind of like yeah I am kind of confused of what you mean in some aspects. Mm -hmm. So let's take a framework like utilitarianism. Mm -hmm. Um, 
which is the one that I am most comfortable. <laughs> yeah, a specific kind of utilitarianism, like preference, hedonism. Um, rule utilitarianism. Yeah, well, rule utilitarianism arguably just collapses into act utilitarianism. But what I'm asking is when you this might not be that important to get into, but when you talk about utility, are you talking about utility hedonically or in terms of preferences? Like, is utility whatever maximizes preferences, or is it whatever maximizes, like, happy brain states or something like that? Oh, that's a really hard question. Um... <laughs> okay, well, well, maybe we don't need to get into it. I just thought it would be good to get a bit of clarity on what kind of utilitarian you are, but we, we can just drop that for now and raise it only okay. if it becomes relevant. I mean we can also like talk about the ontology and the, the, the reason why sure. I'm just like trying to bring up a random framework um, is because I'm trying to think about a word that's the best way. Take your um, time. It's all good. Yeah. Within these frameworks, we can arise to decisions or like use it, for example, the greatest amount of happiness for the greatest good of people or, mm -hmm you know, what humans ought to do with one another. We can create like a set of rules where we can find something is like right or wrong within those set of rules that don't necessarily express, um, um, I guess like you feel like it's good or you feel like it's bad. So like the ontology is rule based, uh, rule -based it's duty based, it's what humans ought to do with one another. It starts with um, the idea of, and yes, it does link to emotion, but it's not just emotion. Let's like be clear about that. So, for example, um, let's take an action like lying um, or, yeah, let's take an action like murder, which is, like, more, like, obvious. It's a little um, easier, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, in the anthology, if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I read back on this, you can totally correct me. You take the idea of murder, you say, okay, would you want to be murdered? No, you probably wouldn't want to be, like, and the answer is you shouldn't do it. Well, um, let's there's, say there's, wait, let's, there's mm -hmm. you told me to correct you though. So there's different, there's different kinds of deontology, which I, like, I have not read into all the different schools of deontology, but I don't think there's like one way to reach okay. deontological rules. The Come system the is end. deontological if, if it's rule-based, basically. That's the yeah, only uniting say, factor. Okay, let, yeah, sorry, let's, okay, Kantian, um, Kantian ethics. So you start with like, would you want to, um, what is it? What is it? Would you want to murder somebody? Or would you want to get murdered? And the answer is no, okay, you probably don't want to murder anybody. Um, okay, um, let's say you're okay with getting murdered. So let's bring that, let's universalize it. Let's say everybody murdered each other. Um, does it arise in a contradiction? Yes, if everybody murders each other, then there's nobody to murder anymore. So technically, like, there is a contradiction there because murder cannot continue being an action. So therefore, murder is wrong. Do you okay. understand what I mean? I do, I do understand what you mean, but I don't think it's going to really get you anywhere. So, um... Well, within that framework, we would say, hey, like, murder is wrong, and that's technically, like, not emotive-based. Yeah, if, if someone has started from an assumption, right, if they, if they view things as being good only if they're universalizable, then if something isn't universalizable, they're not going to view it as good. But if someone, you know, goes and commits murder or values murder or whatever, you would just be begging the question against them if you started from the assumption that they value, um, that they that they only view things as good if they're universalizable. Maybe they don't, right? Well, but I'm not trying, what I'm trying to like argue here, the deeper thing I'm trying to get at here is that you can um, rise to examples of what is like good or wrong based on like a set of rules that doesn't necessarily rely on emotion now you claim like oh like but why should they value um universality which i think it's a question you're making um it, not quite like I, I was just saying that if you told like so the guy who wants to commit murder right we'll just we'll just call him bob from now on so i don't have to keep saying the guy who wants to commit murder or whatever so if, if you mm -hmm. tell bob that he's wrong and the reason he's wrong is that murder isn't universalizable, right? That's not actually showing that Bob has a false belief or is contradicting himself. It would only be the case if Bob had made some kind of prior statement that, like, he only considers something good if it's universalizable. So if you critique him by starting from the assumption that he only values universalizable things, you're begging the question against his position, right? You're starting from an assumption that he doesn't actually hold. Oh, hey. So, no, I, I understand what you're saying, and, like, that's when we have to, like, go deeper, like, why do you value that? Why do you value that? 
um, which I would then again like say, well, it's the same thing of how we like treat the world around us, like objectively. Um, that technically, like, if you really, really want to get into the details of everything, everything goes back to uh, what is it? To an arbitrary value. However, the value that doesn't mean the value doesn't hold any deeper truths to it, or doesn't hold any knowledge that we can gain from it. And the reason why, I guess, I go back to the whole idea that I don't like the idea of oh, it's simply what you like or dislike. Um, is that I, this me? This is just maybe I'm just getting like semantical or you know too too nicky picky about it. But it seems to like really erase like those deeper truths or understanding that we can come from of like the human condition or what most people would like or what most people would benefit from um, mm. under the idea of it's just your individual like or dislike. Well, yeah, but again, to me, all that all that sounds like is it sounds kind of like an appeal to consequence, right? It doesn't sound like you're actually explaining what's wrong with that conception of morality as being about desire. It just sounds like you're saying, you know, we're going to lose our ability to make certain claims or something like that. Like, like if I could ask you like this, right? Because for me, like, I'm, I'm still kind of right now what i'm doing in this conversation is i'm just trying to understand what you even disagree with me about because it seems no, like i might not even disagree with you i think i'm just being nitpicky because the well, whole idea mm -hmm. um yeah because i'm you trying yeah because sure. <clears throat> i do think that there is utility within acting as if morality is a subjective thing um or acting as if there are deeper rules or frameworks that we can use that the majority of people um can fall under or be like hey you know what um, yeah, like I would, what is it? Like I value happiness. We should try to maximize that for everybody. Or it seems like uh, like happiness in general leads to a better society even for me. Like even if I'm just like a complete like egotistical person. Um, so I guess my main problem with when people claim like, oh, well technically it's subjective because values are all subjective. Well, that it's might not be my exact claim, right? Uh, you can continue, but it, whether I call morality objective or subjective, we really need to be more precise because there's kind of objective and subjective aspects to it. So I'm I'm okay. not making some crazy categorical statement of everything is subjective or some shit like that. But please continue. Okay. Though. Just wanted to flag that. Well, yeah, um, and maybe like I right now I'm just like just like having a like I'm just you know like talking like giving out like random like conversations feel or whatever, sure. not really making an argument. The next following set of statements. Okay. Um, but at least, like, with my mind waves argument, the thing that was, like, driving me crazy is that, um, mm -hmm. or what I was, like, most annoyed about was this idea that, like, oh, well, it's basically arbitrary, or I guess this treatment of morality being this just arbitrary thing, because we wouldn't say that for science, we wouldn't say that for math, we wouldn't say that for, like, any other science, we, don't, we wouldn't claim that, oh, well, it's arbitrary because it's set on, a, like, a set of values that you just choose to value. No, we, we, we act as if there's a knowledge within those frameworks um, that we create, even if, if at the end of the day, when you really, really boil it down and get nitpicky about it, yeah, technically, there are a random set of values um, or values that just make us feel good about it. Like, if we feel better saying, like, hey, you know, atoms move randomly than saying atoms are led by invisible little gnomes, like, things like that. Um, so... I, that's why, like, I don't like taking the same approach to morality. I treat it as objectively, or I treat it as if there's a truth to be found of it, found within it, just like I treat any other science or any other thing that we would look at reality. Does that make sense, or do I sound, well, um, crazy? In, in, it's, in some ways it does. I can't say I'm totally clear about it. What, like, I don't know what it means to say morality is arbitrary. We'd have to be, like... A lot more clear for me to even know if I agree or disagree with that. I guess that my kind of core interest is just just sort of making sure that we agree that an agent like I mean see I, I worry sometimes when I talk to people about these things that I'm gonna annoy them by being repetitive so you know forgive no, me. No it's okay but, to be repetitive go for it. Yeah because because the thing I'm orbiting around is like I, I just want us to be clear that if someone, you know, values raping a baby, they don't have any false beliefs and they're not contradicting themselves. Not necessarily, at least. Well, yeah, they can choose to have that value. However, then that's, mm, the that, that's, a, that's sorry, that that's a different thing. I, I actually don't think they can choose to have the value. Oh, so I, I, really? I'm, yeah, I'm a doxastic involuntarist, right? Like, I don't think people can 
you know, I don't think they can choose their, well, <laughs> I guess we're, because there's a question about what kind of things values are, but like, I don't think that, I don't think that we choose our beliefs. Some people try to say beliefs and desires are kind of like the same kind of thing. They use the word desire, but with, without talking about all that, which I only half understand, like, I, I'm I mean, just, this might get I, into a separate conversation, but I'm down with that because that is just, I do not agree. Um, but maybe I do, you, maybe I have to so, think about it a little bit longer. Well, I just, I just don't think that people choose their beliefs and desires. I think that they kind of, you know, it's just, it's not clear to me how, how that could be the case. Um, I mean, it seems like we just form beliefs all the time. Like when you go biking down the street, you just have constant beliefs forming about like where the cars are relative to you and you know, where you are and this sort of stuff. And like, if I convince you of something, you can't like will yourself to be unconvinced, right? It's like, you just have that belief now. So it's just, it's just not clear to me how someone could choose their beliefs. And I think the same kind of thing like applies to desires. Like they just seem to be mental states that just like arise. Um, would you be okay if I kind of argued or showed how that might not be true? Yeah, we can, we can segue. How do you think someone can choose their beliefs? So this, this is actually a really like interesting conversation topic to me because at first it doesn't seem like that. At first it seems like, well, you just believe what you believe and you use like logic and reasoning to try to form your beliefs. Or sometimes you just go based off solely how you feel. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's just it isn't necessarily a choice it's just something that happens to you would you would you agree that phrasing is more or less correct with what you think generally sure okay so this is this is gonna go totally off spiel for a second but <laughs> okay. you're, you're gonna have to stay with me for a bit i will bear with you okay so i am currently going to therapy um, I'm going, I'm going to like therapy, um, to deal with like my depression and anxiety and oh my, am I learning many, many things there. Um, and one of them is how to practice ideas like self-compassion and, uh, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So this is, you are choosing, you are literally choosing to put yourself in a different mind frame over and over and over again you're choosing to talk to yourself kindly um or to think like kind thoughts about yourself even if you don't want to or you're choosing to develop these habits where you are more aware of the moment and not your emotion itself to change your behavior and therefore later on to change your belief so what i am saying here is that it is something that you could literally practice and it might not happen overnight but with that repetitive mind frame in mind and with more and more practice of, you know, choosing mindfulness or choosing to talk good about yourself or being kind to yourself, it can literally change how your perception of yourself and your belief around others are. So it's really interesting. I can send you studies about it. I can send you like videos about it. it it's crazy. It's like, it's kind of new. I'm not going to lie. Um, like the study I would say has like kind of been formed. Well, a lot of things in psychology are pretty new. Like it's not recently until like, if you look at like the whole like humanity and shit like that, that we've recently like acknowledged like depression and anxiety and things like that. Um, but th these are practices and habits that you could use to literally change your belief about the world and yourself. I guess I so, don't understand where the part is that you're choosing your own beliefs. Well, the idea is that you are choosing to incorporate a set of habits will, which will then change your beliefs. Like, so right when... now, like I, sorry, right now, like, but, and this is gonna really personal, sorry chat, sorry guys. Um, so right now, like I, you know, like part of my depression, like what I realized through therapy and stuff is like, wow, I talk really meanly about myself and I honestly feel this way about myself. Like I. Like, these are not nice words to say to myself, and I really do feel this way about myself. So, with, with, um, what is it, with practicing mindfulness and with practicing, um, self-compassion, I keep on telling myself, like, oh, no, like, it's okay to feel this way. It's okay to be this way. And I personally, I still believe that all these, like, negative things are true. But the idea is that if you keep practicing this, your beliefs about yourself will change. When you say they will change, that sounds mm -hmm. kind of like a thing that is just happening, though. 
Like, I guess, I guess that it's not clear to me what, how, how you as an agent are like making your beliefs change. But I'm also, I'm also just a bit sensitive to like, it seems kind of like this is going to turn into quite a thing here. Like, I mean, we're going to end up time. talking. We're gonna end but up if talking you don't, about, it's okay. <laughs> well, it's not that I don't have time. It's, it's just that it wasn't, it's not the core of uh, what I wanted to talk about. We, I guess we can. It's just like, this is going to get into talking about like free will and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know if that's like, do we want to just have a discussion that just goes like way the fuck off the rails into Narnia or something? Like, <laughs> okay, no, we can bring it back. Um, but I think we basically like kind of agree in most of the parts. Like, oh, why is someone in error for killing a kid? Well, technically, a person like can value killing kids. They would be right within their full home framework. Um, but usually when people talk about what humans ought to do. Um, it has to do with like maximizing social coherence, it has to do with like maximizing like benefits of society. And you can create a framework where, you know, what maximizes social coherence is the killing of children. Um, but we try to work on a basis of what most humans value. Um, just like we would do for any other science, any other math, any other like subject. So to me, these distinguishments between like objectivity and subjectivity are like pretty damn arbitrary. Well, as um, long that's what I get. Again, the objective subjective uh, wording is not the thing that's like most central to me here. Like as long as as long as we agree on that core point, right? Which is that if someone has different values than you, uh, it's not necessarily the case that they're wrong or that they're contradicting themselves. Like that is really the core of what I wanted to. Kind of like well yeah sure they're, they're right out. within their own framework i wouldn't disagree with that um so <laughs> we just agree i guess well it yeah okay well it's the, the language of framework is like a little bit weird but like yeah we just understand they don't have they don't have any false beliefs and they don't uh there's no contradiction so all, all well, that's really... why i would argue like if like the majority but okay i guess like i'm very i'm a person who also gets like very into like details sometimes so i i mm -hmm. focus That's a fine. lot on practicality and if you like i i know you only know me like from arguing with like mind waves and destiny and stuff like that um but i speak a lot like in freaking practical terms which is really bad for conversations like these because these these like conversations usually you have to have like so much like background or understanding or being very specific about your terms or you go off the rails. So it, it could, you know, like speaking of practicalities can be terrible for conversations like these. I fully acknowledge it. Um, and I don't know if I'm going off the rails here again, but the reason why I don't like to say like, oh yeah, well, they're technically like not wrong or whatever yet. Like, yes, technically they're not wrong to themselves. But I mean, if we're talking about like a greater scope of how society treats each other, like what most people want for either each other or for themselves, then like they are wrong within that framework. Um, and I know, like I know that technically, like I'm like talking like in general terms here. And if you really get into it, well, then yeah, technically they're not wrong within their own framework. Um, but I guess the point that I'm trying to drive home is that because I see it used in this, and because I'm trying to speak like in practical terms, like. What is like, what are most people talking about when they think right or wrong? What are most people talking about when they think that like, this is okay or this is not okay? That's where I would say like, oh no, like it's wrong. Like it's not okay. Or like they're, they, they're not like, yeah. And by wrong, all you mean is they're not doing what you like. But that's the reduction <laughs> is. Like, but, I, but that's it's something what you're that saying somebody though. says one plus one equals four. And I'm like, that's wrong. And then it's like, technically, well, it's wrong because you're not using the value system that I like. Well, it's it's a I mean, contradiction. It's that's that's different. Well, like that's if, not if, technically a contradiction because you're just choosing to value a different number system. No, wait. It, sorry, if they're using the words in the same way as you, right? But that's then, a, that's a point. Like if like I don't think I'm using words differently than you though, because that would be a different kind of thing, right? Like I'm not I'm not saying that like. I don't even want to give an analogy. It's it, I, I don't think that I'm using words differently than you, though. Like, what am what am I using differently? Okay, I'm not necessarily sure what you mean by that statement. Um, well, so if, if you say if you say myself. that by if you say that by two they mean something other than two, 
right? Like, I'm not doing that with any of my words. I mean the same thing that you mean when I talk about, like, killing a kid. But, okay, here's the deal, like, or I guess I'm going to try to get even, like, more nitpicky about it. Like, why, why are we why are we even using like this alphabet why are we like why are we even like speaking or attaching the word bottle to whatever the like whatever the fuck this is why are we attaching the word (laughs) hand to whatever this is like at the end of the day it's it's pretty damn arbitrary but if somebody said this is a foot like yes i guess if you want foot to equal hand in your own language framework then yeah, sure, you're technically right, but I'm well, not going to say that, like, practically speaking. Sorry, but, but Pixie, what word am I using differently than you when I say, you know, I value killing a kid, right? Because I'm not using foot to mean hand or two to mean elephant. I'm using no, the words saying, just like you use them. Well, yes, but the point that I'm trying to get across here is that when you say, like, is someone in error for killing a kid, then I go back to, like, okay, yeah, I technically they're not because it's within their own framework if they value killing kids but then if it goes to like oh because it's simply what you do not like it's not just simply what i do not like it's what as a society have we deemed as like a whole of what it what like facilitates us what hurts us what you know creates anguish within us what does not so i i wouldn't like it's what you you and some other people don't like it's not just some other people it's (laughs) a lot of people well, yes, and I okay. think that matters. I think that's important um, because when it comes to this idea of like what we as a like whole society, what we think is like right or wrong, that impacts our laws. That impacts how or how we interact with each other. That impacts how we create like social stigmas. That impacts how we um, how we socialize with each other. And I think those things are things that really impact us today to day life. I think those are things that can dominate a person's life or can change the course of society if you're able to convince um, people to either change their values or view their values in a different light. So I'm just, I am getting nitpicky. I I am kind of making a consequentialist argument here that like, hey, we shouldn't just say it's just what some other people don't like because it has a very, very real impact on how everybody interacts with each other. And I think that's, I don't think that's just like, that should be treated in an arbitrary way. Um, I guess I just don't understand what the criticism is. Like, it just sounds like you're saying they're not doing what will maximize utility. It's like, okay, but that doesn't mean that they're wrong about anything. Well, I'm not talking about the kid here. I'm talking about the way that you're using language. Um, how, how am I using language like i'm i'm just using right and wrong to refer to what someone values well no i'm saying how you're specifically saying like oh well it's just at the end of the day like what you don't like or what you and a lot of other people don't like like yes yeah when you say they're wrong all all you're saying is that they're not they're not maximizing utility or something and it's like wait i i'm I'm talking okay i i like i'm not talking about the original argument here i'm talking about that Yes, like technically, when it comes to the argument of values, like I agree with you. Like people can use their own like arbitrary frameworks, and within yeah, those and, and they're not and they're not right. calling two plus two foot or something like that. Like they're using the words just like you do. They're just saying, you know, I value well, this to thing. To me, and they are. Don't... Well, to me, they are using that language of two plus two equals. Foot oh, okay. Because... Can I ask a question then? When I say sure. I value killing a kid, just to take that example, what word am I using differently than you? In that sentence well why do you value killing kids wait but before that no, I, there... I need to know why you value killing kids well, first before well I what what once i I'll, okay well i'll answer that in a second but just the first question though is just do you think i'm actually using a word differently than you there well, i'm not sure that's why i'm asking why do you value killing kids okay well i could just say which <laughs> I, I don't actually value killing kids. Just for the record, it's not actually a value I have. But uh, someone could just say they don't know why they have the desires they have. Well, I would argue that we should use like logic to try to argue for our desires. Wait, but logic alone is not going to necessitate that someone holds particular desires. Yes, but logic itself should argue like whether we should follow through with those desires or not. But wait, is there a, just before we go to the logic stuff, like, is there actually a word in that sentence? Like, all I'm saying is, I value killing a kid. 
Like, what word? Well, like, I'm sure we mean the same irrational? thing by I. No, I'm just talking, okay, I'm sorry. I'm talking I know desire, this sounds so. off topic. I'll get back to your point in a second. <laughs> Do you think values can be irrational? Uh, it depends what you mean by irrational, probably. Okay, how would you define irrational? Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. What do you think? Um, I'm not, I want to use your framework, so I'm not sure. Um, but the reason why I say that is because if you, I guess, like, if you theoretically believe, like, a value could be irrational, um, then, yeah, if somebody says, like, oh, I value killing kids, um, because whatever, 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 I can say, like, oh, no, like, that isn't making sense, or that's irrational. Or maybe you hold that, but society as a whole, as a has a as a as a whole, does not value that, um, or it doesn't really maximize like social coherence. It just maximizes like your arbitrary value. Like I, to me, when somebody or to me when somebody says, um, "I value this" or "I value that," like I value, let's say, like I value like death and destruction and chaos. Yes, <laughs> I can value whatever I want. Um, okay. But somebody can easily say like, hey, that value um, hurts other people, that value mm -hmm. like hurts society as a whole. So mm -hmm. even though you could value it and you're technically not in the wrong for valuing it, um, it doesn't make sense for anybody else to implement it or to help you with that. So we would call that like wrong because it is but literally like crumbling society. It sounds like you're just defining wrong as something that doesn't maximize utility. I, I kind of am. Um, and I'm not saying, let yeah, me but... be clear, but let me clarify. Sure. Um, I'm not saying I have all the answers for morality. But I'm oh, not sorry, I thought, I thought you were saying that. That sounded like the claim you're... I'm, I'm no. Ob obviously uh, you're not oh. saying that. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying that these rules are clear and cut yet. I'm not even saying we have the answer for what humans ought to do to maximize social coherence. I just believe that we can treat it as something that there are answers for, just like how we can treat anything, like any other study that mm, there, there can be found there. there. There are answers to the question, what would maximize social coherence? I don't, I don't see how anything I said would make me deny that. Of course there's answers to that. Okay, I just want to be clear, because I feel like usually when I have this conversation with a lot of people, what they're trying to get at, and this is my own bias affecting the conversation, which I will like totally agree with like i will totally like hold that on to myself all me um <laughs> okay yeah it's that usually when i get into these conversations the end claim that a person is trying to make is that we should treat all of this as arbitrary or we should treat all of this as you know not as seriously as other topics just because like oh technically it's just based well, on your value i mean s sorry do you do you know what i spend my time doing on the internet no, I don't actually. <laughs> I spend my time arguing ethics, right? It's like I, mm -hmm. I, I have very deep concern for a lot of ethical issues. Most of my content is about veganism, right? Like I don't think mm -hmm. that, I don't think that, <laughs> like I'm not gonna go around and say, no, no one should give a shit about anything, and everyone should just do whatever the fuck they want, right? Like I don't, I don't see how that follows from anything that I'm saying. It just okay. seems to me that people aren't in error for ha not necessarily in error for having values that are different than mine. That doesn't mean that I like, look, if I debate someone about veganism, okay, this is a way that this conversation will very often go. They'll, I'll say, okay, you know, what is it exactly that's true of animals that if true of humans would make it okay to treat them like we treat animals? And they'll, they'll mm -hmm. say stupid shit, right? They'll be like intelligence. And I'll say, oh, okay. So wait, do you take the view that it's ethical to Holocaust the disabled? And usually when you point out that that conclusion, right, of saying it's ethical mm -hmm. it's ethical to kill beings below a certain intelligence threshold, you point out that's going to apply to some humans, you know, there's often revulsion to that, and the person will try to switch their view around or weasel in some way. But some people just own it, right? They're like, yeah, I mean, of course, like what Hitler did wasn't wrong, yada, yada, right? Um, <laughs> but the, the thing is, when, when someone does that, the move I make is not going to be to say, like, well, you're wrong with respect to, like, something more than just my desires or whatever. I, I would just appeal to everyone's desires. I'd just be like, well, I'm pretty confident that, you know, most people listening, you know, whatever their exact values are, do not value holocausting the disabled and, in fact, disvalue that. 
you know, if there's some fringe who are persuaded by what you've said, then okay. But I trust that now that I've teased that consequence out on your view, everyone's just going to look at your view and reject it, right? They're just going to say, I can't agree with that guy. So the point, mm -hmm. the point I'm making there is just like, you don't have to get into any weird moral realism shit. It doesn't hamper our ability to have moral discussion. I don't need to be able to say anything more than that. If I show that their desires are just at odds with everyone else's, that's, that's doing the job right there. They disagree. Well, I agree. I try to argue within people's frameworks as well, which is why I was like using like such a like long winded, long winded argument with my graves. Cause long winded. Me, long winded. Yeah. I, my, English and Spanish is both terrible. I don't know exactly like how to use language. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, um, to me, it seems like he valued objectivity over, or like the concept of objectivity over morality, um, because morality is technically subjective. So I was like trying to ask him like, well, what's the difference between objectivity and subjectivity ultimately at the end of the day, if we get like really specific about it. Um, so that's why I was like trying to use that framework because to me, that's what it seems like he valued. Um, well, th that guy, I think, I think, frankly, you like won that discussion pretty clearly. I don't think that guy was making that much sense. He seemed nice enough, but like, I just, yes. uh, he was saying really silly things. So when I, um, yeah, like, I don't, maybe I can't, I think I, this, this conversation derailed because I came from this, not in an attacking point of view. I didn't want to like, cause I came from it as a conversation, but also in the yeah. sense of like these prejudices of, oh, people, um, sometimes treat subjectivity or like not subjectivity but treat anything that has to do with like morality as um arbitrary um as just like not really that important because oh technically it's on a set of values and how can you claim like one value is above another and that's why we I, well we create frameworks can mm -hmm. i try to sum up your worry and you tell me if i've got it right Yes, please, because I suck okay. at summing things up. <laughs> no, I, I, you, you rip on yourself far too much. By the way, I think, I think that oh. you've been perfectly clear. So you know, well, okay. <laughs> maybe perfectly clear is an exact. No one's fucking perfectly clear, but <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Just don't worry about it. So, it sounds to me like you're just saying that you don't like people who make arguments about moral sub... Sorry, don't, sorry, let me try that again. You don't like the arguments about moral subjectivity or anti-realism or whatever because they seem to often be used in a way to, like, trivialize morality, right? To make it, like, why yes. the fuck... Would, right, okay, so I totally... I totally am all on board with not trivializing morality. Like, people... We, we really fucking care about some things. Like, we have very deep moral convictions. Like... Most people in this society, if you ask about their view on, like, just to take something ridiculous, like the Nazi Holocaust, right, they're going to have an extremely deep moral conviction that that's wrong, right? So I'm not, when we talk about trivializing morality, it's like, I guess I don't even understand how someone could could do that or what they'd be saying if they trivialize. I, I just don't think I'm trying to do anything like that, right? I'm just trying to be honest about what I think is going on with morality. I think it's just people talking about their desires. And when there's moral dis... Like, here, let me just think of how to say this. Give me, like, 10 seconds. Yeah, no worries. Um, I wouldn't try to say... I would never try to make the argument that, you know, anything goes because morality is subjective. Because... Or, or some shit like that, right? Like, because the whole point of how I view it is, like, you know, people have their desires, right? It's like... It's not, their desires aren't suddenly going to change because you say, oh, like morality is grounded in desires. They're still going to have a desire against a Holocaust and a desire for charity to be given to and stuff. So it's just, I guess I just don't see how any of this like has really the like effect of trivializing morality. It seems like it could only have that effect if you were thinking of it as this like really intense, like fucking almost like supernatural thing. And then someone's like, well, it's not, it's not really like that. It's just our desires. So that, so, that was, that was my first totally blurry, unclear statement there. Can you make anything of that? Or should I try to say something more clear? Um, no, no, I completely, I'm basically completely agree with everything you said. Um, there is one more thing that I want to say. Um, okay. I guess just to clarify, do you believe that we can find like some and this is such a big word Ugh. that we can find truth within desires. What is that like a deeper mean? meaning? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and I guess this goes back to like how we treat like science and mathematics and things like that. 
Um, so, and, and this is just conversation territory. This is this is like I'm not trying to make like a real argument here. I'm just trying to ask you stuff. Yeah. Um, so just like we act as if we could, as if we make discoveries or progress that leads like the betterment of humanity. Mm-hmm. Very vague ter- like terminology. Um, Mm -hmm. by studying things like science and by studying things like math that, you know, makes our world somewhat easier because we're able to create a new invention that Mm alleviates work or things like that. Um, That we find, I guess, again, like some sort of utility within it. Do you Mm -hmm. believe we can do the same thing by examining like morality and like what rules or what actions we ought to follow? Um, (laughs) I guess it depends how you're asking it so if we make like a directly analogous question like can we examine our desires or like we call them our morals or whatever our values can we can we examine them and see which ones are really like conducive to utility and stuff or like what kind of you know actions we could take that would maximize utility like yeah that's all that's all just kind of like descriptive stuff right there of course like we can there's going to be a a reality there's going to be real answers to questions like what will maximize utility right there's going to be some fact of the matter about whether like you know having everyone follow like islam or something would like maximize utility right so so yeah there's answers to questions like that about what would maximize utility and yeah we can discover the answers to those like say that we have some current like social organization or some something there's some way society is currently organized or some aspect of how it operates and we just discover through through whatever exact means of investigation you know maybe we're making use of the tools from like physics maybe we're making use of the tools from politics whatever the domain might be you know we investigate this this way in which society is functioning and we find out hey this thing is actually suboptimal for utility if we if we organize it like this way instead we're going to get more utility yeah of course there's answers to those kind of questions undoubtedly okay awesome we agree on this because that is like again when i when i talk about like objective morality that's usually what i'm referring to as well that i think if we do examine like these questions of like like what or what can humans what what humans ought to do to maximize like that sort of utility like i i do think there are answers that we can find for that um, right, but we have to be clear though, right? Because the thing we're asking about there is really just a descriptive kind of thing. We're asking, it's not normative, right? We're just asking what would maximize utility? Yeah, there's answers to that and we can use like all the tools from science to find answers to questions like that, right? We can use the tools from economics, from physics, from, you know, neuroscience, whatever bears, right? We can use it to find the answers to, uh, you know, what would maximize utility, sure. But that yeah, that's... and we can direct... We- don't you think that we can like derive conclusions from that of like how humans ought to act as well? Given so for example, that we want to maximize, because once you start using the word ought, it gets a bit different, right? Once once you say, can we use science? To, like here's here's two questions, okay? Can, uh-huh. And they're both they're both rhetorical, but just to like be clear, so like, can we use science to discover what will maximize utility? Of course we can. Can we use science to determine if we should maximize utility? No, that's that's like a category error. The second one, right? Well, yeah, that's when it comes to, like, values, and technically anybody yes. can have yeah. many arbitrary value. Um, and then technically, like, they're not wrong. Like, I could say, like, I value wanting to kill myself, so therefore, like, I should try to kill we myself even... because that's what I value. But that doesn't mean that, like, within the framework of how society interacts with each other or how we affect one another, that's the best, I mean, course of action to take. Does that I... make sense? Well, again, best is normative language. If by best you just mean won't maximize utility, then then sure, right? Yeah, and then at the end of the day, I agree, somebody can arbitrarily, like, choose to not value that. But the whole idea of, like, working within a framework is that we find some sort of utility within that, just like any other subject, Ooh. I guess. Well, it doesn't have to be that we, we don't have to adopt we don't have to adopt like I, what you're calling a framework because of utility right like it could be for some other reason that someone adopts something but uh, like i mean but there's... i mean generally speaking don't people adopt frameworks because utility or am i, I mean, am I wrong there well it depends if we have we'd have to get into what you mean by adopt a framework like there's there's like Say say that we're talking about, for example, what laws we want to implement, right? Like, and we put forward a set of laws that will maximize utility, right? It's like, 
people who want to maximize utility will probably like agree with those laws because they'll maximize utility but someone who's you know deontological they'll only agree with those laws to the extent that they like kind of work in line with their deontological principles so if the laws are like what we mean by like a framework in this case then like the reason for like you know supporting or not supporting that framework may or may not have to do with utility oh i'm sorry i lost you a little bit there <laughs> <laughs> um, um I, I don't even think it's the most Im important point really like we like the core is just kind of like yeah there's like answers to questions about what will maximize utility like we can agree about that and we should we should try to find out answers to things like that because i mean even even if you know we have people with different values and stuff most people generally speaking you know are down with like increasing human happiness like you know getting rid of like diseases and stuff like this there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of convergence between you know what people value whatever their exact system is and like finding out how to you know do those things is obviously good and worth doing but the, like none of that's i don't think we're disagreeing about any of that stuff the yeah i don't think we're disagreeing at all but i i still like talking about it because it helps me like i'm being selfish here yeah but like even if we agree at the end of the day i still like talking about it even if we go around circles sometimes just because it helps me learn how to word things better for the future sure. it helps me yeah. um be like the way that I, I have fish brain memory, that's what I call it. I have really bad short-term memory, so, like, I forget ways that you phrase it. But I feel like every single time I have a conversation like this, even if it's with somebody who agrees with me, when they're able to um, word things in a better way than I do, I something of that sticks with me. So that hopefully in the next conversation I have with another person, I could use similar wording that makes things clearer. Yeah, well, it's, it's like an iterative process, right? Like, to, like talking about some issue. It's like if you have conversations about a topic a bunch, every time you'll probably, you know, if you're trying to, you're probably going to figure out ways to say things a little better, things to avoid saying because they cause confusion. And then if you look at, like, the first time you had the conversation versus the tenth time, you're probably able to make sense to, like, way more people by the tenth time. So, yeah, I, I agree yeah. with all that. So, um, mm -hmm. go for it. Well, I mean, you know, if you have something to say, you can say it. I was just going to go to one last kind of little topic. Well, no, I was just going to say that I, 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 like, again, I know I, I don't have to apologize, but I'm still going to apologize because I <laughs> came in here with, um, with the whole idea that, oh, he's going to think, he's going to make the argument that, oh, like, it's basically, like, subjective, like, oh, it's subjective, there's, like, we shouldn't really treat it seriously, like, blah, 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 blah. Which I was gonna be like, ah, oh, like no, like there is, I, I do believe that there is utility in acting as if this is an objective thing, um, just because, and you know, maybe like you don't, you find value in like subjective and objective things, but I have just met like way too many people that are like, oh, if this is in any way or form subjective, which I don't even, again, I, I claim it's objective within a framework, which is, like, different. But you know what I mean. Well, let's be, um, can we just be clear about that claim? Because that that is, such, like, it's the vagueness of that language that's the kind of, that can be kind of troubling. Okay. Like, it's objective within a framework. So, what, what, the framework, okay. What it, sound, it sounds like what you're actually saying is just that there, <laughs> there are, like, I, I okay, how, how do I word this? I guess the way I was going to go for phrasing it is just that, there are objective answers to questions about what will maximize utility. Um, yes. Yeah, like, because cause that's that's a descriptive claim. And that the thing is that, if you say it like that, that's not going to throw anyone off, okay? Like, no matter what kind of anti-realist you're talking to, an error theorist, a non-cognitivist, subjectivist, you know, they're they're all just going to be like, yeah, of course, of course there's, there's like, <laughs> going to be objective answers to what will maximize utility. It's just, you, you just don't want to conflate that with any kind of statement that it's like, you know, there's, there's, uh, that, I guess it's, it all comes down to really that core claim for me. You just don't want to be giving the impression that someone is actually in error if they uh, have different values, right? Like, because from okay, the perspective so of some, well, I'll just say one more thing. From the perspective, from my perspective as someone who like argues about ethics all the time, right? It's like, I don't, I don't find, like, I don't try to approach ethical conversations by going like, oh, you know, this person is, like, out of line with the thing that we all should value, right? Because that just puts me in a position of I have to 
give some account of like why people are wrong when they don't value the thing I'm saying they should value, right? It's easier for me to just show that their values are out of line with other people's values. That's really like the best you can do, right? And that seems sufficient for most moral conversation. Um, sorry, I got, I got like a little bit lost at one point because my mind was like trying to repeat the point that I would get lost in. That's okay. Um, you say what you want to say. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So the, why I say like within a framework is that, but let's say within like utilitarianism or within like Kantian mm -hmm. like ethics, um, if you're working with like these like set of axioms in mind, if you're working with like like these rules set in mind, you can arrive to conclusions within those frameworks that are either right or wrong with like within that, right? So mm -hmm. in Kantian ethics, like the whole like universe, like make it universal, do you run into contradiction? Um, mm -hmm. So you can, within that, you can say, oh, this is right or that is wrong. So then, you know, then we can like start going within the weeds of things like, well, why should humans ought to well, value universality? And give, that's uh, when it gets more complicated. Um, but it's a whole idea that we can create frameworks to work within. I, I would encourage you to use the language of what follows logically instead of what it like follows objectively or some stuff like because that because once you start talking about objective and subjective you're just like throwing yourself into all this metaphysical shit which like i mean i guess if that interests you you can do that but it sounds like all you're saying is just that like <laughs> if we have if we have some kind of like sort of starting statement like you should maximize utility and then we have other you know statements uh of like you know what does or doesn't maximize utility and whatnot, we can just form a valid logical inference about what kind of things we ought to do, right? That, that's, that's a way to say it without invoking all of the metaphysics. There's just certain things that are going to follow logically. Okay. And, th and then um, if someone questions, you know, does that actually follow or something? It's like, you don't have to get into this, does it follow objectively or subject, like whatever the fuck that even means. You can just be yeah. like, well, like, just as a matter of logic, like, yeah, I mean, it just follows straightforwardly. Okay, because in my mind, when I was thinking framework, I, I that's, like, what I had in mind. Like, you create, like, a set of rules and see if they follow logically or not. But, yeah, yeah. it probably would be a lot more clear or basic to say that you can follow logically. Or we can create, what is it? Yeah, we, we can create, like, statements that... Yeah, I, I'm trying to think about the best phrasing because I can say, oh, what follows logically, but I think a person's going to answer, well, what do you mean by follows logically? But I have to say just follows logically from like the set of axioms we well, determine? Well, let's, or... let's just write it out. Like, are you are you comfortable with um, sort of like formal logic, like propositional logic yeah. or first order? Okay, yeah. So like if you just write like... Let's see, um, let me write up a statement, like, you know, um, I, like take your time but this is hard like i i'm still learning um Here you go. i'm still learning about how to phrase things the best way that's why i like talking to destiny and stuff because he helps me so much i'm like ah that's how i should have phrased it to begin with that makes everything so much clearer so every time i learn how to phrase something clear like it helps so much yeah i think uh i think destiny is good at being clear he's got a lot of practice from that so here's, here's like just a basic statement, right? Like for all X, U of X implies S of X, U of E, therefore S of E, right? So this could mm -hmm. just be something like for all X, you know, if X maximizes utility, then you should do X. You know, um, you, eating maximizes utility, therefore you should eat, right? And we could, we could mm -hmm. you know, do some l little proof there and show that that's valid, right? So then, uh, so, so you can point out that like, if you make, if you make certain statements 
you can you can show what logically follows from them right it's like that that is kind of like a straightforward claim right because like all that's being said here it's like there's the value assumption that's baked into that first premise right you're saying like if a thing maxes you maximizes utility then you should do it so that's you what you're calling like building your like axiom or your framework or whatever like i, I don't know exactly what language you use but it's like yeah, you no. make some fundamental value statement okay and then the next statement is just a descriptive claim there's nothing normative about it you're, you're just saying it maximizes utility to eat right and we can we can just talk about it like what happens if people don't eat well they're all gonna die that seems to not maximize utility right and then it just follows logically you know therefore you should eat so i think it sounds like what you're actually saying is just that there are uh, there are things that you know are going to follow logically like it's just going to be a straightforward deduction about what we should do if we make some initial value statement mm -hmm. yeah okay. that, that's a lot easier than getting into all the objective subjective stuff you're just saying that's if you right. make some kind of value statement mm -hmm. there's going to be logical conclusions about what kind of things you should do yeah okay this is so funny because it's giving me like flashbacks to philosophy like 101 and i feel like i should just like pull out my old notebooks but this is gonna sound so horrible i never take classes like notes in classes because i'm a very oral, like oral learner mm -hmm. <laughs> um but yeah i i think definitely i'm just gonna say well if you create a framework like x is x if x equals y then if x equals y then or if x yeah a oh, fuck i lost myself but I yeah, no, mean, I. Though. <laughs> yeah, at least you know what I mean. At least you get it. <laughs> well, I mean, if um, I write it out, I'm I'm pretty sure I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you can you can create like frameworks that will, or you can create conclusions that will or will not be true from that. Which is what I was like trying to get at in like my last conversation that something can be true within that. Um. So yeah, any any last things? Um, yeah, well, there's one little topic. It's kind of what we've been talking about, but just a little, a little mm -hmm. fold of it, I guess. So, um, what do you think it means to actually say something is good, or you should do it, or you ought do it, or you, you can pick pick whatever language you want to zero in on there. But yeah, like, what's it mean to say something is good? Well, it kind of like goes back to the whole idea of like what maximi maximizes utility. Um, so just to, to be me, clear, like, I'm, I'm not asking what kinds of things are good. That's like the normative ethics question. I'm mm -hmm. asking what like goodness is on your view. Because like I'll just give my view. Like as far as I'm concerned, goodness is just whatever we desire. When we say something's good, we're just saying we have a desire for it. Would you actually take a different view there? Um, I think, but it might go back to like, oh, because you value it that way. Um, but I'll attempt when I say mm -hmm. something is good. I mean, what is like, what benefits, um, both, like most of society with the least time possible. Um, you, do you take that to just be the same thing as goodness? Like, it's just like a synonym? Basically. Okay, because that's that's going to have the effect of like making your morality kind of like descriptive, basically, you're just going to be saying this thing maximizes utility, this thing doesn't maximize utility. Like, when we when we say that something is good, um, here, let me think about how to how to approach this for a second. When so here, maybe I can ask it in a kind of way that, that you might mm -hmm. relate to. Do you do you think that you discovered that utility is good? By thinking about it or something um somewhat yeah because it's it sounds kind of like good is its own thing and then utility is an instance of it right like is that the kind of way you'd look at it or... no utility is you you have utility and good like seems to ride derive from that Okay, so when you tell someone that they're wrong all, all you're saying is what you're doing doesn't maximize utility yeah, with the least amount of harm possible because then people want to be like oh well you know if somebody like shoots five people but then they're happy or it like isn't that good and then it's like or isn't doesn't that yeah that doesn't even maximize utility but the point i'm trying to get at here is that to me like oh if you kill a person and ten thousand people can be saved then yeah that is what you should do um if so you don't have to kill a person and to still save those 10,000 people, then you shouldn't do that. So you, you would take the view that it's a meaningless question to ask if utility is good? Yeah. Okay, all right, just being clear. There's something called an open question argument. It's kind of like interesting to talk about there, but 
yeah, we'll, mm. uh, I guess we'll just call it there. Let's just try to sum up. So it sounds, it sounds like we actually agree about a lot of shit. It sounds like, it sounds like we both kind of understand that people just, you know, have their desires. Some people desire things like utility. Some people desire things like, you know, deontology. And if someone says, you know, that they, you know, they, they value killing a baby, it's like, we could make a statement that that is like, that will not maximize utility, but that person isn't necessarily in error. They don't have any false beliefs. They don't, they're not contradicting themselves. That's kind yeah. of, we agree on that general picture? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it was a great conversation. I really like talking to you. Thank you. I really like this <laughs> conversation as well. I actually happy because you know my last philosophy conversation ended up like it was such a like like fight mess disaster um <laughs> so yeah okay thank you so much if you want to come back in the future if you want to like revisit a topic like don't be afraid to like you know shoot me that dm or maybe i'll shoot you a dm who knows yeah, sure you know what we you should talk about your... sometime is Oh yeah, it's, it's just ask yourself on YouTube. What we should do sometime is uh, talk about veganism. Has, any, oh, has anyone got you work on the animal issue yet? I okay, so this is so bad. Um, because what is it? Because I agree that like when I look at all the arguments about veganism, there is there is no good argument against it <laughs> ecologically, <laughs> um, moral like morally. If you like care about like empathy if you care about anything like that i just have a hard time following through i guess or maybe vegetarian do you think like maybe vegetarianism is wrong this one i think it's always wrong because like in veganism i think like i guess like theoretically possible you could get like milk from a cow without like forcibly impregnating it if you just like have wild cows you know what i mean um, but yeah. I guess that's a conversation we can have for another time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that when we get into it. But yeah, I'm happy to chat with you about that. All right. Well, it was yeah. really nice, uh, really nice talking to you. Yeah. Wait, I have one last question. All right. What is it? People, people get mad at me when I claim that. And I, maybe it's the same thing with you because you're like, oh, you can't take that position. Because I still claim that I'm a moral realist because I'm saying like, well, within these frameworks, we can have like moral truths within that. Or And now you know what I mean by framework, right? With what should follow logically given like a set of axioms, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Would you say that's like a crazy position to say? Do you think I'm starting too much drama saying that? Um, to me, like it makes sense, but. Well, if all that's meant by realism is that there are you know, logical, uh, you know, derivatives of certain values, that's something that actually, like, any kind of anti-realist could agree with, like an error theorist, a non-cognitivist, a subjectivist. So if your realism is compatible with literally every form of anti-realism, you might, might not want to call yourself a realist, but um, <laughs> it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not the huge deal or something, though. The thing is, uh, people mean different shit with realism, okay? Like, there's people who are robust realists, and those those are the ones who believe, like, the crazy shit that, like, I just cannot comprehend. Like, when I talk to people, like, I actually won't say names, but <laughs> there's people <laughs> I talk to about that who I just can't wrap my head around what the fuck they think they're saying. And then there's people who they mean something very minimal when they call themselves a realist, right? Like, if you look up moral realism, a lot of the time you'll just see, like, there, it's the position that there are moral facts, right? So if you mean something minimal like that, then it's like, well, that's that's compatible with like certain views that are typically called anti-realist, right? Like on that view, subjectivism is a realist position because subjectivists think there are moral facts. So when it comes to like, should you call yourself a realist or not? I mean, I don't care that much about labels, but it just kind of depends how you want to use the term. And that term gets used in a kind of range of ways where, you know, by some it would be fine to call yourself a realist and by others it would look kind of funny to call yourself a realist. Yeah, I just, I think that's like one of the biggest problems I encounter also when, I'm, when these like conversations go into the objectivity and subjectivity, because the more I talk about it with the different people, the more I realize like people have different definitions and that we might not even necessarily disagree, but we're using like different definitions for the same, for, or the same 
definitions but using different terms for it. Does that make sense? Do I sound of, crazy when I no, say no, that? No, no, no. Of it, it makes absolute sense. Like for example, now I'm remembering part of your debate. Um, there were there were times when you guys would just be like using a word differently and kind of talking past each other. Like when you have a lot of philosophy conversations and stuff, they, like you get you get to a point where you're just like. It's fucking pointless to be like talking to someone and using words differently because we're just we're on like parallel channels right it's like the interesting criticism is always where you meet someone linguistically and then see if shit makes sense so like if i hear you using a word differently than me i'm just going to try to understand what you mean by that word and then just see if within your kind of linguistic like framework what you're saying makes sense or not like i'll just try on your framework and see if stuff makes sense from that point of view so yeah, di disagreements about like, we're just using words differently. That's like a, uh, it's like a semantic disagreement. It's not, it's not clear that there's actually a disagreement on like, on like content really. It's just the meanings of words that you're using. You know, you're using them differently. It's not clear if like, if that person put on your framework of your language, if they could still spot an error, right? And the interesting thing is of course, yeah. they can spot an error once they put on your language. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something I have to practice more. I just have to try to, I guess, well, I, I do try to put myself into people's frameworks, but it doesn't always work out the way I want it to, <laughs> <laughs> long story short. Yeah, fair enough. Well, well um, yeah. I hope you have a good night. <laughs> yeah, same to you. Uh, feel free to message anytime. We'll talk about veganism sometime. All right. Bye. Okay, have a good one.